If you get a grilled cheese in Italy, you're obviously not gonna get American cheese in between two slices of Wonder Bread. Instead, they get a bit wild and they take mozzarella, they sandwich it in between two pieces of bread, batter it, bread it, and then deep fry it. And what you get is this ooey, gooey, crunchy, melty sandwich that is one of Italy's great comfort foods. It's like if a mozzarella stick got together with the grilled cheese. And that's what we're going to make today, so let's just jump right into it. We've got a bowl of fresh mozzarella here, and we just wanna cut this mozzarella into these rounds that are fairly thick. I don't know, quarter inch, maybe a half inch, somewhere in that range and you should be good, but you don't want any thin slices or else there's not gonna be enough mozzarella in each of the sandwich. We want our mozzarella to be like a low moisture mozzarella, so I'm gonna dry the pieces out on paper towel. Then we're gonna take some white sandwich bread and we're gonna remove the crusts. The crusts dry out a little bit and they're just not necessary for this recipe. And I'm actually out of homemade breadcrumbs that are usable, so I'm gonna take these scraps and add them to my breadcrumb bag, which I'll just leave out at some point to let some of this bread dry out, which I'll then turn into breadcrumbs. Once we've removed the edges of about six to eight slices of bread, then we can go through with a rolling pin and flatten out each piece of bread. And then we're gonna place one piece of mozzarella in the center of the bread and then close that up. And then we're gonna kind of use like the moistness of the bread to seal the edges so that that mozzarella gets encapsulated between the bread. And then just go through and prepare the rest of the sandwiches. If any piece of mozzarella is a little too big, just tear off a bit of the edges until it fits nicely in the bread. Once all the sandwiches are made, we're just gonna cut each of the sandwiches into a triangle. Having a good serrated knife on hand is gonna make this job a lot easier. Now get these on some sort of pan. I actually forgot to salt the mozzarella, so remember to do that. Next we wanna set up a three-stage breading station. I got some breadcrumbs, about two cups, and I have six eggs. I'm gonna crack three of them to start, and I wanna whisk them up really well. You see how it's like stringy a little bit? I want that stringiness to loosen up. Kind of like this. Otherwise those strings get caught up in the breadcrumbs, which is no good. Then we got some all-purpose flour and everything is salted. And we're gonna take one piece of the sandwich, coat it in all that all-purpose flour. Then we're gonna take one hand that's gonna be wet and we're gonna use a fork to kind of help us get coated in the egg. Use that fork to scrape off any of the excess egg and then into the breadcrumbs. And you wanna keep tossing the sandwich in the breadcrumbs. As you move it, coating it in the breadcrumbs, it's gonna reveal any wet spots and the wet spots are our enemy. We just wanna make sure we get these coated completely in dry breadcrumbs, no wet spots. Stand it up on its sides. This is really where the love comes in in this dish. Then just go ahead and repeat Repeat this with the rest of the sandwich pieces. Once they're all completely coated, get them back in the pan. Now we can toss the flour and the egg, but keep the breadcrumbs. We're gonna do this process again after these sandwiches rest. Now you wanna just toss these sandwiches into the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes to firm up. After some time in the fridge, they've just tightened up a little bit. The breading has dried and stuck to the sandwich. Now we can repeat that same process minus the flour and just add another layer to ensure that none of that mozzarella seeps out during cooking. So back with everything, I got three more eggs and I'm gonna start with a clean bowl. Gonna add a little bit more breadcrumbs. Takes me a while to accumulate fresh breadcrumbs, so I always have Italian style on hand just in case. Same idea, one more time. Just like last time, get all the excess into the dry breadcrumbs. Make sure it's nicely coated. Perfectly crusted. Now he's gonna go back in the refrigerator, firm up again, and then we get them fried. Now every grilled cheese needs something to dip in, whether it's hot sauce, a soup, or in this case, we're gonna use my weekday sauce. And I've showed this so many times, I'm gonna leave a link down to the full video in case you wanna really dive into it. But we're just gonna make a quick and easy version where we run a really good can of tomatoes through a food mill and get it to a nice puree or a passata, some sliced garlic and a basil stem. Get some olive oil in a pot and over medium high heat, we're gonna infuse the olive oil with the garlic and basil. And then we're gonna toss in that tomato puree. We're gonna bring it up to a boil and then drop it down to a simmer and cook it until it's nicely thickened. 
Then we're gonna get our pot full of oil so that we could fry our sandwiches in. Fill the pot up no more than halfway with a good frying oil and then add a thermometer. It's important to keep track of the temperature in this recipe. We really wanna keep it in the range of 330 degrees Fahrenheit to 350. Anything higher, you might brown the sandwiches before the cheese in the middle has time to melt. We're just gonna cook one as a tester, let one side set and then give it a flip. I like to kind of splash some oil on top just to promote even browning and then just keep flipping and basting in oil until we've got a nice golden brown crust. Then transfer it to a rack to dry. Then I'm gonna cook them in batches of three, keeping track of the oil. And if I ever see the oil drop, I'm gonna adjust the temperature up. And if I see the temperature of the oil get too hot, I'm gonna drop the temperature down. When the sandwiches are done frying, we wanna just transfer them to a cooling rack so that we can drain the excess oil and then just finish cooking these in batches. Remember, when you fry anything, there's a carryover cook. Whatever shade of brown you pull it out of the oil, it's gonna continue to get darker as it cools. So you have to keep that in mind. Once all the sandwiches are cooked, we can platter them up, serve with some fresh basil, the weekday sauce, and some Parmigiano Reggiano. Now mozzarella and carrozza translates into mozzarella in a carriage, and they say that when pulled, it resembles the reins of a horse and carriage. You gotta love the Italian imagination. Oh boy. Oh man. This is another one of those grilled cheeses I wish I sold on the food truck. You've got to give this one a try. You're going to love it. Recipes down in the description, and I'm also going to link a few other of my grilled cheese recipes because everybody seems to enjoy those. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. Did you know I used to run a grilled cheese truck in New York City? I got four of the recipes I used to serve on that truck linked on the screen right now. This is the grilled cheese sandwich I ate almost every day for two years. It's also my most viewed video, so go give it a watch.